Engage Zone Control is a retrofit section control system for your John Deere 1910 air cart. The system communicates with your air seeder's existing GPS mapping system to prevent overlap by opening and closing up to eight sections per bin, controlling all the bins on your air cart. In this video series, we will walk through the installation of the following components of the Engage Zone Control System. Let's take a look at the tools you will need. Metric and Standard Wrench Set Metric and Standard Socket Set with Deep Well Sockets and Extension Wire Brush, Putty Knife or Other Tool to Clean Rust and Product Buildup on your Air Cart Cordless Drill with 5 16 driver and or flathead screwdriver. If you are installing on a tow between air cart, you will also need a cordless drill with 5 16 drill bit. If you are installing on a 2014 or newer air cart, you will also need a metal cutting tool, such as a grinder with a cutoff wheel or sawzall. Collect the following parts. The Engage Zone control units are placed one per bin, installed below the meter housing. First, remove the meter roll from the meter housing. Next, remove the ceiling wedge and John Deere meter housing dividers. To make the manifold lighter, you can remove the manifold cover by unclipping the two fasteners. Remove or loosen the manifold, depending on the type of cart and location of the manifold. On the rear manifold of a tow-between cart, begin by loosening the rear bin primary tube hose clamps. Remove the black plastic couplers under the metal hose clamps, then remove the primary tubes on both sides of the manifold. Take note that on double chute systems, the primary tubes might be different lengths. Take note of which tubes are installed on the top row and which are installed on the bottom row. It is not necessary to completely remove the metal hose clamps or black plastic couplers from around the primary tubes near the fan. Next, locate the six bolts connecting the manifold to the meter housing and remove them. Have someone hold the manifold or use cable ties to temporarily secure the manifold while removing the bolts. On all other manifolds, remove the six bolts and nuts that connect the manifold to the meter housing. The manifold will be held in place by the primaries. If you have a model year 2014 or newer air cart, cut off the mounting tabs on the rear of the meter housing using a metal cutting tool such as a grinder with cutoff wheel or sawzall. Remove the black gasket on the manifold. Clean the top of the manifold and inside the meter housing with a wire brush. Try to remove as much rust or product buildup as possible. Using a flathead screwdriver, remove product buildup inside the recessed area of the manifold. Place the metal insert provided on the top of the manifold. Be sure to place the insert with the gasket facing down. The Engage Zone control unit is very heavy and has sharp edges. Intelligent Ag recommends wearing the appropriate protective equipment. Lifting and installing the unit may require two people. Undo the latches that secure the lid to the unit and remove the lid to make the unit lighter. Make sure you don't get any dirt inside the enclosure. To install the Engage Zone control unit on the rear manifold of a tow between cart, align the Engage Zone control unit plate with the six bolt holes under the meter housing as seen here. Realign the manifold with the six bolt holes and secure the unit and manifold to the meter housing using the six bolts and nuts included in your bin kit. Have someone hold the unit and manifold or use cable ties to temporarily secure the equipment before replacing the bolts. Clean the black plastic couplers from the primary tubes and be sure to remove any corrosion on the tubes. 
reinstall the primary tubes and secure with the black plastic couplers and metal hose clamps. Begin reconnecting the center top tubes and work your way to the outside and bottom tubes. If the tubes no longer align correctly with the openings, shim down the fans or fan bracket until they are level again. Carefully slide the engage zone control unit plate between the meter housing and manifold, as shown here. Align the plate with the six bolt holes under the meter housing. If more clearance is needed for the bin unit to slide in, loosen the six meter housing bolts of the closest meter. Secure the unit and manifold to the meter housing with the six bolts and nuts included in the bin kit. Make sure you leave all the nuts loose until all units have been installed. In the event you are applying canola seed, place the canola insert foam into each canola insert. The canola seed inserts will also work on other low-rate small seeds. Then, place a canola insert into each section of the meter housing dividers, as seen in this illustration. Insert the supplied left and right meter housing dividers into the meter housing. Ensure that the hole in the right divider lines up with the pressure port. Then, insert the provided sealing wedge. Reinsert and secure the meter roll. Repeat the steps above for each bin. Once completed, fully tighten the six nuts on each manifold. You will want to keep a record of your motor control serial numbers. You will assign the serial numbers to their associated gates during the configuration process. Gates 1 through 4 correspond with the serial numbers on the leftmost motor controller in the unit, while gates 5 through 8 correspond with the rightmost motor controller. Bin 1 is the bin closest to the tractor. Bins 2 and 3, if applicable, are further away from the tractor. The Gateway 300 is a computing platform that enables communication from the Engage Zone control units to the virtual terminal. Where you will install it is dependent on whether you have a tow-between or a tow-behind air cart. The Gateway is shipped with generic software installed on it. For instructions on how to install the proper software on the gateway for your Engage Zone control system, please watch the Setting Up Your Engage Zone Control on the John Deere 2630 video. This will need to be completed before the system configuration can be performed. Collect the following parts. On a tow between air cart, the Gateway 300 will be mounted on the back of the air cart frame. The mounting location must be at least 8 inches away from the operator to ensure safe operation. Position the Gateway 300 on the back of the air cart frame with the connectors facing any direction but up. Ensure the Gateway harness and Wi-Fi antenna cables will reach the mounting location. On the back of the air cart frame, Mark the location of the four mounting holes shown here. Remove the gateway and drill out the holes using a 5 16 inch or 8 mm drill bit. Once completed, secure the Gateway 300 to the back of the air cart frame using the provided screws, washers and nuts. On a tow behind air cart, you will mount the Gateway 300 on the front right side of the air cart frame near the primary tubes. Begin by positioning the Gateway 300 on the mounting bracket. The Gateway can be mounted on the bracket in any direction, providing that the connections do not face up when mounted to the air cart. Secure the Gateway to the mounting bracket using the provided screws, washers and nuts as seen here. Mount the Gateway on the front right side of the air cart frame near the primary tubes, using the provided U-bolts and mounting hardware. The Wi-Fi antenna 
provides the network required if the air drill is equipped with a recon wireless blockage and flow monitor. We still recommend installing the antenna, regardless of what blockage system is installed on the air drill. This will ensure that all connectors on the Gateway 300 are sealed from the environment. Collect the following parts. The Wi-Fi antenna should be mounted on the air cart frame or railing, at least two feet away from the operator and at least eight inches from the Gateway 300 to ensure safe operation. Thread the Wi-Fi antenna cables through the hole in the mounting bracket and through the nut. Tighten the nut to secure the antenna to the bracket. On a tow behind cart, mount the bracket on the air cart frame near the Gateway 300 using the provided U-bolts and mounting hardware. On a tow-between cart with two bins, mount the bracket on the air cart railing using the provided U-bolts and mounting hardware. On a tow-between cart with three bins, mount the bracket on the air cart frame as high as possible while ensuring that the antenna cables will reach the Gateway 300 and secure using zip ties. Connect the antenna cables to the gateway using this illustration. Cover connectors 2, 5, and 6 with the provided caps. Collect the following parts. The work switch is installed near an existing work switch or near the height sensor. It is important to note that the work switch uses one of two methods to determine when the implement is in the ground. The work switch is engaged or triggered when the implement is in the ground. Likewise, the work switch is disengaged or untriggered when the implement is out of the ground. The work switch is disengaged or untriggered when the implement is in the ground. Likewise, the work switch is engaged or triggered when the implement is out of the ground. If your work switch uses the inverted method described above, follow these instructions to invert your work switch. Remove the three screws from the blue work switch cover and remove the cover. Loosen the four interior screws. Move the black and red wires from the top two screws to the bottom two screws. Finally, replace the cover and reinstall the cover screws. Mount the work switch to an existing magnet or to an existing work switch bracket. Ensure that the work switch is triggered when the toolbar is in the lowered position. Take note that you can unscrew the work switch magnet from the bracket and reattach it to the other end of the bracket to allow for other mounting orientations. Next. Plug S2 of the work switch extension harness into the work switch harness. On some implements, such as a disc drill, it may be more advantageous for mounting purposes to install the provided proximity switch. You can install the proximity switch on one of the hydraulic cylinders as shown, like this. If you need to invert the proximity switch, this can be done later from inside the VT application. Route harnessing along existing harnesses where possible. Otherwise, avoid pinch points and allow for an adequate amount of harness slack at the implement and air cart pivot points. Collect the following parts. To install the tractor harness, start by unplugging the current ISOBUS harness. Then, Connect S1 of the tractor harness to the tractor's ISOBUS outlet. Next, connect S2 of the tractor harness to the ISOBUS harness that you just unplugged. On a tow between air cart, connect S3 and S4 of the tractor harness to S5 and S1 of the gateway harness. On a tow behind air cart, connect S3 and S4 of the tractor harness to S1 and S2 of the intermediary harness. 
Then, connect S3 and S4 of the intermediary harness to S5 and S1 of the gateway harness. To install the gateway harness, begin by connecting S2 of the gateway harness into port A of the gateway 300. Next, connect S3 of the gateway harness into port B of the gateway 300. On a 2014 or newer air cart, connect S6 of the gateway harness into S2 of the diagnostic adapter harness. Then, connect S1 of the diagnostic adapter harness into the JD diagnostic port. The diagnostic port is located at the back of the air cart on tow between air carts and on the front of the air cart on tow behind air carts. Next, plug the sealing plug into S7 of the gateway harness. If your air cart is model 2013 or older, begin by unplugging the CAN termination from the JD cart harness. The JD cart harness is located at the back of the air cart on tow between air carts and on the front of the air cart on tow behind air carts. Connect S6 of the gateway harness into the JD cart harness. Plug the JD CAN termination into S7 of the gateway harness. Connect S4 of the gateway harness to S1 of the bin harness. Connect S9 and S10 of the gateway harness to S2 and S6 of the bin harness. Connect S8 of the gateway harness to S1 of the work switch extension harness. To install the bin harness on a tow behind cart, connect S3 of the bin harness into the engage zone control unit closest to the tractor. If you have a two bin system, connect S4 of the bin harness into the engage zone control unit farthest from the tractor. Cover S5 of the bin harness with a dust cap. If you have a three bin system, connect S4 of the bin harness into the engage zone control unit on the middle bin. Connect S5 of the bin into the engage zone control unit farthest from the tractor. To install the bin harness on a tow between cart, connect S5 of the bin harness into the engage zone control unit closest to the tractor. On a two bin system, connect S4 of the bin harness into the engage zone control unit farthest from the tractor. Then cover S3 of the bin harness with a dust cap. If you have a three bin system, connect S4 of the bin harness into the engage zone control unit on the middle bin. Connect S3 of the bin into the engage zone control unit farthest from the tractor. Route any loose harnessing toward the tractor and secure using cable ties. Route harnessing along existing harnesses where possible. Otherwise, avoid pinch points and allow for an adequate amount of harness slack at the implement and air cart pivot points. This concludes the installation of the Engage Zone Control System. For videos, current documentation, and other resources, visit intelligentag.com support. Refer to the Engage Zone Control Operator's Guide to configure and use the Engage Zone Control System after installation. The gateway is shipped with generic software installed on it. For instructions on how to install the proper software on the gateway for your Engage Zone Control system, please watch the Setting Up Your Engage Zone Control on the John Deere 2630 video. This will need to be completed before the system configuration can be performed.